Hello, welcome to another episode of Sonic Touch, episode 20 of all things. It's the show dedicated to making music on touch devices. <laughs> I'm Nick Bat, editor of sonicstate.com. I'm Gaz Williams, song surgeon. So today uh, we're going to look at the Korg Poly6 application. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to look at that a little bit later on. But first, Gaz is going to take a look at, um, well, what are you going to look at, Gaz? Well, I've got a couple of samplers um, that we want to look at, um, both of which use entirely different and very innovative approaches, really. So what's the first one we're looking at then, Gaz? Well, the first one we're going to look at is imaginatively titled Sampler. OK. Now, oh, that looks pretty. I love this. I think it's a very good app. And um, it's just received an update which allows you to sample into it. Prior to that, you couldn't actually sample into it. So I thought that it was uh, a bit <laughs> wrong to call it a sampler. Uh, OK. Uh, in a nutshell, it's like a, a six-channel sampler that uses various methods to, to actually interact with the sampler. We had comments following our review of identity because I was really saying how, how I like to be able to touch the waveform. People said, oh, yeah, you know, you should look at this one. So, uh, and, and this very much is along those kind of lines where you can... It's got the same sort of font and design uh, sort of ethos as the LE, um, AMOLED display on the Teenage Engineering OP1. Very similar. And actually, prior to this version, it was white as well, which made it look even more like an OP1. But, um, OK, so here I've loaded... Well, actually, I made a sample. I just recorded my acoustic guitar, and I just sort of, um, and it's just basically just playing in this mode. All it does is just play through the samples like so. Okay, but these different modes along here allow us to kind of interact with it in different ways. The first one here, this one lets us create sections. Now I hit this thing here, and I can create really quickly. I can just create like. Oh, they're all, they look almost like uh, um, anchor points. They do, but what these are is I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of creating segments. So, oh, nice. Yeah, and uh, I mean this sample is just literally just holding it next to my acoustic guitar, and so that's that mode, just by touching things. And I like it because, well, especially if you reverse them, and you know. Fine, nice. Yeah, just fine tune. It's so really nice and easy to sort of fine tune those those sections. I mean, you saw how I did it. That's lovely. Yeah, mm. that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it sounds uh, sounds very ethereal. It's it's great. I mean, I think one of the things that's so nice about this is it's so fast and quick to use. Second mode. This lets us just pinch sections, and you can see. Look, I'm, it's you can have multiple touch. multiple touches. Yeah. But this I, one, like, I like the waveform going on underneath as well. It's really, it's that's nice, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's got a really nice look. Okay, third mode. It's like Ebo mode. Now this is a bit like the mode we looked at with I density, where it's just sort of just repeating very small sections. Can you adjust that section? Yes, you like, can here. Sort of, so you can set how. You know, so if we make the smallest one. And it sort of auto loops and cross fades and stuff. Yes, fully. exactly. Uh, tape mode, this is quite fun, all originated from this. So this controls the playback speed, but you can have multiple ones on the go at the same time, and some running forwards and some running backwards. <laughs> really nice. Uh, and then there's a scratch mode. But that's quite cool, I can actually scratch it but not actually change the pitch with that button, should I wish. And then a keyboard mode which lets me uh, play it, the samples like a like a mapped across a keyboard and finally just the playback mode which just will just play the sample back. Okay so now what I can do quite simply I can enable a click track, drag to set a tempo, I'm going to drop into record Any beats. Okay, that'll do. And now it'll just send a click off. Oh, so it plays back your. Yeah. In slot one. Now let's right. jump to slot two. Now, I'm just going to bring in another of the samples that I made and um, 
Uh, let's actually bring this one in. Okay, so here I'm just playing a, I'm gonna stop that first one a moment. And this is just a scale. So if I do just the regular playback mode, so it's just, just going up through a scale. So same thing, first thing you might do is just quickly add these kind of hook points. And you know, I mean, just look how quick I'm getting through this now. It's just really, this is, this is the sort of thing I wanna see in apps. You know, it's just almost, you know, super fast work. You know, I mean, yeah, there we I go, see. virtually done. So I just map all of those points there. So now, oh, lovely. I fine tune a couple. Is that vibrato being added by you or is that actually on the sample? I think that's on the sample. Okay. But one thing is, on all the modes, they're louder uh. if they play on the top, so. And I can actually go into like a legato mode as well. Oh, sorry, I think it's this here. Oh no. Oh, that's nice. So let's get the other one playing now. And now let's just uh, overdub over the top of here. So it's, um, let's set that one off. And the way you do that, you see, you press and hold that and then you can start and stop them. Individual Individually, segments. yeah. So let's jump back to our new one that we just created now. Drop it into record. And so forth. So stop that now. One thing that's quite cool though, you can see what I've recorded now, you can see my fingers, those yeah. circles representing my fingers. I can actually change mode, but the fingers recording oh, has right, actually sweet. remained. So like, you know, jump to some of the other modes. We get some weird stuff. <laughs> There's happening. some weird stuff going on, but let's just go back here a minute. Another nice implementation is you've got effects per sample. And it's in this top right quadrant, and at the top we've got distortion, which we can just sort of, like like wave shape almost, sort of choose the kind of thing. And we've got a filter, which... It's a dual mode. How neat oh, is that? That is neat. And then you just like enable an effect by turning it, touching it on and off. We've got like a, a, like a modulation. And then a delay. And a nice, nicely implemented reverb. Okay, so now if we wanted to, uh, let's say we wanted to sample in, I choose an empty slot, I then go and hit sample, and then say, now you can actually. I record the mix. You can record the mix, so you can resample and then have fun with, with that. Quantize to bars as well, so you can have it all nice and locked in. I'm gonna just record the input now, and I'm just gonna, Ah, ah, ah. Uh, not particularly in key, but um, but just showing just how quick and easy it is to sample. And again, hit this to sort of create a, if you want to get rid of these things, you just literally just slide them off like so. Like here, I could just create, I only need three for instance, one for each of the notes that I sing and then. Bit of reverb there, guys, I reckon. Yes. Do you the world of good. <laughs> oh, you pitch the whole thing up there, right? Pitch the whole thing up. Let's chuck some reverb on. There's a bit of filter in as well, I think. Set the other things off now. <laughs> but um, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, that's really awesome. Actually, mm. I, I love the look of it and mm. the, just the kind of I can. I, I'm itching to get my hands on it myself. Yeah. It's amazing. It's gone. It's shot up right up my favorite app list now. This is really is. Uh, it's very special. You know, again, it, it, this is kind of 
what is it like? You know, I mean, you say it's got some stylistic cues, but I mean, in terms of uh, the precedent, you know, mm. it's kind of, it's definitely pretty new. It's does it have any kind of MIDI or uh, mapping, any, or is it all purely a touch interface, really? Uh, yeah, it's got... it, no, not really. I don't, not that I'm aware of. Um, it's just pretty much touch, yeah. touch on there. Well, that's like, fine. This is the, I quite like the, this is the help, and look, as, as you drag the help along, a little, it blacks oh, out it the background, it just pull, <laughs> pulls a bit of the screen. Yeah. Oh, that's so really... A lot of style, a lot of nice really, style. Really, we like a bit of style. Yes. That's I mean, great. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> Sartorially elegant ourselves. <laughs> um, so... You know, I, I, everything is pretty straightforward. You just get to understand it quite quickly, and it's just, uh, you know, and you, you, you're making music, you know. Straight away. Straight away, and uh, uh, and I'm just, I'm, the great thing with this app is it's just making me think, oh yeah, I've got some chime bars at home, I'm gonna sample them, and you know, just. Uh, and again, how do you get this out into the outside world? You export, or I mean, what, how does that work? Once you kind of create something beautiful, what can you do with it? <laughs> Okay, so we just go here, we go record mix, and then we do like a little performance of it. Oh, so it saves it as like an audio file? Yeah. There it is, into the slot. Is there any limitation to the amount of time that mix can be? Or does it just keep going? I think it'll just keep going. We can just let it play in a little and see what happens. Until it runs out of memory. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's stop that now. So you can just keep going until it actually <laughs> Stop. Until you have no memory left in your iPad. Yes. Okay. So now, with that sample, we can jump in here and then we could audio copy it. And share it between applications. Yes. Not entirely clear whether we can get the whole mix out of there in one go, but um, you can have a good go at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, but, but certainly I could imagine you, know, you could audio copy it and then you could paste it into Loopy or paste it into Aurea or GarageBand even, oh, right, you know. Okay. So Sampler, without the E, is by Marco Alonso. And how much is it, Gaz? Uh, it's uh, £2.99. I think that's roughly about four, uh, five bucks, I think. Yeah, so nice, good quality application. I really yeah. like the look of that. Wonderful. So now Gaz is going to show us another beautiful application. Um, what is it, Gaz? Well, this is, a, this is another granular uh, sampler um, called Borderlands. And uh, I've never seen anything quite like it. So uh, let's have a look at it. It's... Uh, as you can see, we've got waveforms here. Now these ones are the ones that are built into it. And it's quite interesting in that like, you can just like move. Ooh, it looks like a demo for a touchscreen device. <laughs> <laughs> so you can like move your, your waveforms around. And then what you do is by double tapping, you create this like weird little granular sampler thing, which you can just so also move it across the waveform. It'll sort of take little granular samples and, and uh, like this waveform here, it's got some speak, some talking on it. But it's the fact that you can oh, but scale. You, you zoom, you, you, you affect the granularity by zooming in the actual samples, that's neat. Yeah. You know, if you, you fling them off if you don't want any. <laughs> and, um, and then if you double tap on them, then it opens up a bunch of options. You know, we've got attack and release and sort of uh, like a kind of some some quite simple filtering things. And also we can, you know, increase the voices. That's how many, uh, let's just get rid of that one a minute. Like, let's, that's a maximum of 32 voices there. That's the, the duration, overlap, pitch, etc. So, you know, you're not really gonna be Intriguing. composing melodies and stuff so much in this, but, um, but it's more of a, uh, Sounds it's a very unique interface, isn't it? Never seen anything quite like it. And can you get your own sounds into it? Now that's a little bit of a moot point, really, because the way that you do that is you actually have to create a yeah you have to create like an iTunes playlist. Okay. Name the playlist Borderlands, and then oh, then sync it with your iPad. Put and... sounds. No, I think you can do it actually on the iPad. Like if I was to go to my iPad music app, uh, okay. create a playlist, but then, you know, put samples in it. So you can't sample into it? Nope, oh. nope. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, hope that they, let's hope that they will do that they'll, that they'll do that in the future. I'm just absolutely captivated by the way it looks. It's just mm. so kind of, yes. it's just so. It's nice, isn't it? The, yeah. uh, Is there a maximum number of samples you can have? Or? I'm not sure. They do say that the, the samples should be uh, a minute or less, uh, longer ones. Uh, but we can make a recording 
of what we do. Let's do that. And then let's just call it Gaz1. There we go. So it's recording, we can see, etc. Is there any processing or anything that you can do to the whole thing, or is it just pretty much? Not really. Just, there we are, it's recorded, so. And then we can then have a look. So we can play it, and then when we hit share. Oh, in. Oh, right. internet yeah. connection down. Yeah. Suffice to say, if you had an internet connection, you would be able to share it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's not like an instrument as such in that, you know, you can't really use it like sampler, for instance, and you know, play tunes, but... It's more like a kind of soundscape, soundscape environment. Yeah, you know, uh, and again, with an interface that's incredibly innovative and interesting. So, yeah, good app, but yeah, limited use maybe, but it's good. Nice. Mm. Borderlands is available on the iTunes store. Uh, it needs iOS 5 and above, but works with any iPad. Mm -hmm. How much is it, Gaz? It's... Uh, $3.99, which is £2.49. Uh, £2.49. Yeah. Really nice. Mm. Beautiful to play with and uh, to look at. If perhaps not something you're going to be composing yeah. pop masterpieces on. Fingers crossed for a direct sampling option in the future, or certainly at least the, the audio copy and paste. Yeah. So while Gaz um, does some amazing behind the scenes work, I'm going to take the time to introduce the new Korg iPoly 6, which is the latest in the sort of legacy collection that's been ported over to the iPad. Uh, it's out very, very recently. And uh, now let's switch to the main shot. You'll be able to see, look, he's actually laid out the iPad in different. Thank you, Gaz. That's excellent work. Very quiet. Uh, what I've got here is I've just got the um, the Studio Logic Sledge, which is actually is a polyphonic uh, analog, virtual analog synthesizer, hooked up via the camera connection kit to the uh, iPad. So let's launch the iPoly 6. I'm running this on a vintage iPad, um, <laughs> just so you know. You do need uh, iOS 5.1 for this to work, so uh, you will need to update. I did. And here it is. <laughs> I'm playing it via the sledge. You see the keys going there. So uh, it's a simple, you know, the, the structure it actually looks very similar in uh, layout to a Monopoly um, in terms of uh, certainly width. We've got a single oscillator with sub, minus one, minus two octaves, uh, pulse width modulation, uh, we've got uh, triangle, sawtooth, pulse width, pulse modulation and noise. Then we've got uh, an envelope generator, uh, resonant frequency filter, which will self oscillate, as you would hope. Uh, you can change patches for the particular synth by uh, clicking here. We've got factory sounds, a whole bunch of uh, various different sounds going there. And uh, as well as that, we've got a little arpeggiator. We've got an effects generator with various different effects algorithms in there as well. But what makes it really cool is you get two instances of the Poly 6. Ah, yeah. And then you get six instances of the drums. Mm. Now, I didn't know this, but Gaz, you were saying that what actually happens is... Yeah, like, the, it seems to work in the same way as the IMS-20 in that the, the, the drums are derived from the... You make it, but then it'll actually sample the drums. Right, so you, you're not running, um, what? eight instances, you run two instances live and then the drums, when you make a drum sound using the same engine, it's sampled and then played back on the yeah. sequencer. But one thing that's really cool is with the sequencer, um, you've got this brilliant pattern um, switching system. Uh, if I just go here and I press, uh, let's start with this pattern. I can then change patterns. Hmm. And what I really liked about this is, I can just say, I want to keep that one. I'm just going to copy that pattern, take that pattern there, and I'm going to paste it into pattern six. And then I go to pattern six, and I press play. And then I can edit the synth voices. Let's try synth two. And then when I go back to my patterns, those patches, been changed in real time so that sort of it's like a memory recall system I really like this for just sort of flipping around various different sort of song modes and you can actually get some really funky grooves together in fact the demo that uh, that they used to this it, it sounded great and I, I must say I mean the poly the original poly 6 was never really that much of a beauty in terms of synth sounds but this 
I don't know what it is. There's something about it that just makes this. It's a very mm. compelling application to use, mm. more so than the IMS20. I think perhaps it's the simplicity of the synth engine. The IMS20 is quite a, an eyeful mm -hmm. when it comes to synthesis, even though mm -hmm. it's a great synthesis engine. Mm -hmm. There's something about the Poly6 which just makes it feel more sort of straightforward. So mm. a few facts and figures. Each synth engine has up to six voices. You can have uh, obviously one, you can go to unison, which gives you more of a spread, or you can have six voices in poly. And I found, to be honest, I was expecting it to be, you know, really hard work on a, a vintage iPad, but it, it seems to run fine, which is quite surprising. Great. You've also got an effect on each synth engine. Then also you've got a mixer with a send effect as well. So you've got an additional effect. So you can get some pretty good stuff. Mm -hmm. So how about these controls? The sledge is festooned with knobs. So can you map them? Indeed it is. Uh, well, I couldn't actually find that to happen. I'm, I'm twiddling lots and lots of knobs here. If I just mm -hmm. wiggle as many knobs as I can find on the sledge, there's actually um, nothing going on on the screen of the right. Poly 6. No MIDI learn. So no, I, I don't think so. I mean, right. but you can, what you can do is you can use uh, XY pad. There's like a little chaos pad section here which you can assign uh, X and what so you go the X and Y and you can assign oh, those cool. to pretty much all any of those and I don't know whether it's possible to access the any of these via MIDI but it, mm -hmm. I did put a call into call but they didn't seem to think it was possible but you can set this up to be very responsive and these will be recorded into patterns as well so mm -hmm. so when you're actually creating a kind of song you can you know record those modulations Great. into the sequence as well. Yeah. And, I, and I found in no time I was like getting little riffs and jams together and it's really, really good fun. That's what you want. Now once you have your jam together, you can do the ubiquitous uh, SoundCloud share. Uh, in fact, here's a whole load of people that have already put songs up. Uh, and it's nice, it's the SoundCloud, but in a Poly 6. In a Poly 6 skin. skin yeah, yeah, very nice. Uh, close, and you can also, let me just say, oops, close that. Uh, you can also, uh, render it out or you yes. can audio copy uh, and while we're on this menu you can also see that there's WIST which again is uh, Korg's new standard seems to be being adopted by quite a number of programs right um, yeah uh, certainly ones we've looked at recently have WIST which means you can synchronize uh, by having a master and a slave hmm. so if you had somebody else with a Poly6 app yeah you could basically well, jam well, the together IMS 20 and, would be nice yeah, and uh, they nice would link. they would start at the same time and the tempo information would be kind of there ah, fabulous yeah so, I mean, the sound of it, it does have that kind of Korg sort of sound to it, though, doesn't it? Did yeah, I mean, obviously, they're using the uh, the, the uh, legacy the engine, and I think, right. I'm, I mean, I'm hoping that they'll get around to doing all of their legacy stuff mm. into this format. I mean, I really would like to see a Monopoly. I mean, that's yeah. a much more complicated synthesis engine, mm -hmm. but it's one of my favourite synths of all time, so <laughs> I'd love to see that happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's not just a synthesizer, it's like a full production suite really, isn't it? You know? Well, yeah, I suppose in terms of like a six track sequencer mm -hmm. and kind of analog fun, I mean, they, the, the, they have essentially used the same application skin from the IMS-20, as you say. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the same kind of deal. But as I said earlier, there's something about this particular synthesizer that just feels easier to operate than mm. the IMS-20 for me. And with it being uh, polyphonic as well. A, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, the i Poly 6 is available now, just out. Uh, and I think, again, it's another blinder by Korg, to be honest. It's, mm -hmm. It really does seem, it works very well for me. And, you know, as I say, works on an iPad vintage, which is a good <laughs> thing. Not many things do these days. So the iPoly 6 is available from Korg on the App Store. It's at $14.99, so I think that's, what, around a tenner? I think that's an introductory... Pricing. Right, so it's, yeah. it's certainly going to be going up, uh, mm -hmm. that's for sure. But uh, really good fun, well worth checking out. Mm. So that's it for another week. I want to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, we have thoroughly enjoyed, uh, as again, uh, discovering these new applications. Um, once again, please do leave your comments below. It really does help sort of guide us and steer us if there's any apps that you want to see. Well, Sampler and... Borderlands. Borderlands. Both yeah. came in via suggestions. Yep. So once again, thank you very much. That was uh, Sonic Touch number 19. Number 20. Oh, number 20. Goodness yeah. me. <laughs> See you next time. Cheers.